Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another Eastwood Live here in the garage. Uh, this is going to be a part two of tips and tricks on how to um, apply, how to mix, and how to sand your body filler. So we started off a little while ago with, you know, showing, I think it was two weeks ago, showing how to apply it to get your best adhesion. So that way when you sand it, it comes out, it gives you the strongest finish. Before we go any farther though with today's, I want to make sure that anyone who hasn't tuned in before, you know that we want to make this as interactive as possible. So over on the computer, we have Randy. He's going to be able to take care of you on YouTube, Facebook. You know, feel free to ask any questions. How you doing today, Randy? Good. How are you doing? How do you, how do you like being out there instead of behind the computer, Scott? Not too bad. It's pretty good. Be able to share the knowledge to get the guys to do the job right. And for all of our Scotty C fans, you're going to start seeing more of them. Live videos all the time, and we just start shooting regular videos on um, body filler. We're going to do respirators. We're doing all kinds of stuff. Yep, get them up so on product pages. He's not just answering questions here. He's actually going to be the star of videos. Yep, so, so let's do some body work. It's going to be big. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> So we'll do some body work here. Uh, hopefully we have a little bit of B-roll as this is just setting up, getting ready to sand. Uh, while going over how we did it, you can see here it's mixed, it's consistent. There's no um, you know, separation of resins. Um, here when I'm spreading it, I am, or mixing it, I'm not stirring it. It's always kneading, just sliding it over and over again. Gives it the uh, uh, uniform without adding any air bubbles. And right there was me applying it. So we're getting ready to go right now. You got that nice, you know, real sticky uh, body filler, which means you know you're really ready to go in and start sanding. Uh, so what I've done is I'm happy to use the DuraBlock sanding blocks that we have. These things are really nice. They give a little bit of flex on some of the smaller ones. The larger one, really no flex. It's going to give you the straightest cut to your body work. Uh, and all you need to do is use the pressure sensitive paper. So what I've started off with is 36 grit. It's going to cut this body filler really quickly, kind of get it started, and then we can go from there. So while you're sanding, one of the tricks I always use, and Joe will be able to get in on it, is the fact that you don't want to come straight side to side like this, and, and that's it. Because what that's going to do is the edge of your panel is going to, or the edge of your sanding block is going to wind up digging in over and over again in the same spot. So what you want to do is you want to kind of make like an X pattern and you want to kind of sand like sideways, you know, and switch it up back and forth as you sand uh, to be able to constantly make a new, a new section. You can kind of work your way across the panel and then you can flip and you can work, you know, the other way going across the panel and just keep going back and forth. What this is going to do is it's going to rough it in really quick and kind of get you started and get you sanding through it all. And as you can tell, because I caught this in like the kind of sticky state, I'm not creating a whole lot of dust. I'm kind of just rolling it off, which makes sanding a whole lot easier, right? When it's just, just kind of flashed off. So I kind of sand through here. Now, as you can see, the highs are starting to show through. So I don't have anywhere near enough body filler on here, which means moving forward, I am going to have to apply more. And one of the tricks you can also use, don't worry about, you know, doing this, is you can actually tap high spots down. So if Joe can get in here, you can see there's a, a, a fairly decent high spot here. And I have some smaller ones to be able to, you know, they show up very quickly. But over here where the filler's untouched, uh, it doesn't show up much now. But in a little bit, we're going to show you exactly what happens. So I'm not going to go full out and sanding this because this is going to require some more work. But I want to be able to show you some tips and tricks for moving forward with if you were sanding this completely normally. So the next product I'm going to use, now that was 36 grit. So if we were to move forward with 36 grit and, or jump into 80 and you don't get rid of all those 36 grit scratches, you're going to be in, pro in trouble. So I have guide coat here and what this is going to allow you to do is you really can't see where you sanded that well. So if we go ahead and we put the guide coat over this whole thing, and get it settled out. You don't need a whole lot. You're not actually painting it, but you can see now I've missed the whole thing black. Let that dry for a little bit. Now, as we sand, that black is going to make it all the way down into the scratches. So you can see, you know, where the, the areas that you need more work are and you can quickly address them. So I'm going to swap over at this point to 80 grit and I want to show something pretty neat. So with this paper, as uh, Joe can see, you don't need any kind of special tools. All I ever do is just lay it out a little bit past either edge. And all you can do is quick rip. That's it. And you're already ready to put it on. Now this does come with a, uh, 
a protective backing on it so you don't have to worry about you know wasting all your sticky if it comes undone or anything like that you can tear it off ahead of time and set them off if you want a whole bunch of pieces and just set it on the block and you know you're gonna have a nice straight cut and uh, I guess now while this is kind of drying up just making sure it's getting dry is a good time to look over to Randy and see if he has any good questions right now yes we have um, one question um, the guide coats in black are would you ever use another color I wouldn't because almost all of your body fillers are going to end up a yellowish, greenish, or bluish color. So if you use a tan one, it could potentially get kind of buried in there. You don't really see it. The black, I've never seen a body filler that it doesn't show up greatly and really show you where you need to work a little bit harder. Anything else? Um, that's it right now. Right, a lot well then, of compliments on your work, Scott. I'm going to go ahead and create a little more dust. And at this point, now that it's starting to dry, I am going to put the dust mask on. So hopefully it doesn't muffle too bad because this is something you don't want to breathe in. Definitely uh, doesn't have the isocyanates, but it's also still not good to breathe in if you're kicking up a lot of dust. So I'll quick make some sanding um, on this. And I want to show, I'm not going to go real hard into it. I want to show it real quick just by taking off the top layer. So now, if I get Joe in here, there's definitely a lot of low spots that'll need attention. But if you can get in real close here, Joe, you can actually see all the 36 scratches that are still in here. Hopefully that clears up pretty nicely because I know it's, it's really nice to be able to see where your 36 scratches are. Hopefully you guys in there at home can see this. Uh, obviously your low spots show up like crazy, but so do your 36 scratches. So if you were working this and you knew you didn't need a whole lot more like I do, you definitely want to keep working till all of that is gone. And the reason being is if you put any kind of glazing putty or you put any kind of uh, primer over that, it's such a deep scratch that what's going to happen is uh, it's going to wind up potentially shrinking back on you or it's not designed to hold in such a a large scratch so you'd wind up having it come back out again now since this is going to need a lot more work instead of having you guys watch me you know sand it and work it and sand it and work it what i would like to do though now is i'd like to talk about where to go after this so generally speaking i'll take my body filler to about 80 grit and you want to get it to the point where it's feathered now this one i'm not going to continue on as it does require a whole lot more work uh, but what it's going to show is I wanted to dictate, you know, or see how well that guide coat works. You can see your lows, obviously your highs show up quickly as bare metal, and you can see all your 36 scratches. So take the assumption I've worked this fully through with the 80 grit, and I'm to the point where I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, and one way to tell you're happy is feeling your body work. This is a huge tip. So a lot of guys want to come in and try and run like just their, their fingertips over top of the body work like this but you really can't feel a lot with just your fingertips. You want to keep your hand all the way down flat on the surface. And by doing this, running across the surface, you can feel when there's like an edge on your body work, and obviously there's a lot of edges here, but as you roll off the edge, you're going to feel that. You're going to, wow, that's, you know, that's a low spot. That needs more work. And it's something that practice makes perfect. You know, you're going to get a feel for what you're doing, and it's only body filler. Don't feel bad if you need to put two or three coats on or four coats on to get it right. I mean, it's something that's a learning process. So if you put it on, you take it off and you took too much off, no big deal. You know, there's some more body fill in the can, mix it up, put it on and keep working it. You'll, you'll get it. It's uh, really not bad. Just takes a little bit of practice. So with that tip, the, the, you know, being able to run your hand flat on the surface is a huge deal to be able to feel where your, your highs and your lows are. But say that's completely taken uh, down all 80 grit, it's feathered, the edge is really nice, I'm happy with it. There's two ways you can move from here. So one option is you can move on to our contour glazing putty. This is going to be a lot like the body filler, except it's a lot thinner, a lot runnier, and it's designed to fill anywhere between 80, 120 grit scratches. So if you take that to 80 or 120, this is gonna be a perfect product. If you're not quite happy with one of the edges, it's just so ever so slightly undercut, meaning that the metal is just slightly higher than the edge of this. This has slight filling capabilities, so certainly not a problem to put it over top and, and finish to smooth it off. It can also fill any of those deep sand scratches. Now with this, you're gonna to wanna to take this to about 180, 
or 220 if you move on to say you know a urethane high building primer because that you're going to need that 180 to 220 with the urethane but this is a great option also a really good option if you have just that tiny little door ding this is perfectly fine to be placed over sanded uh, paint as long as it's good condition firm paint you say that tiny little dent you can uh, a lot of times i like to take uh, some 180 or some 120 on a uh, on a tiny little block like this and kind of block the area around the, the tiny little door ding and then I just place ever so slight amount of this and you actually want it feathering all out without ever going down to the bare metal and uh, you know eating into the original corrosion protection from the factory so that's huge there as well or the other option when you've taken that up to 80 grit say you have you know large large sections say we're done and this hood is you know has a lot of work because it's it's been you know over the years seen a lot of abuse the contour polyester primer surfacer this is a great, great option as it is essentially a sprayable version of this. So super, super high build. You usually want to spray around a 2.0 or a 2.2 tip as it is a very viscous material. But since it builds so high, you can take that up. You can spray this. It is a direct to metal uh, primer. So you can spray the entire hood and then it allows you to block sand that hood super, super smooth getting rid of all those crazy uh, you know, sand scratches that may be in there. If you're, say, even 80 grit, you can do it. I mean, I tend to like to do around 120 with this, uh, but this is a super building primer that is absolutely excellent uh, for getting those nice laser straight panels. So at this point, we've covered a lot of the body work. We'll jump back over to Randy and see where we're at. Um, yeah, we've got a couple questions on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, one, uh, can you add another layer of body filler directly over the guide coat or... What's the prep? Does it need to be sanded? Does it need to be cleaned off? Both? That's actually a good question. Uh, so the question Thanks. was... It wasn't here. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing my best over here. Hey, so you weren't even the mic on. Well, I can always uh, repeat it. So the... Uh, my, my, my mic was... Now your my mic My mic was on. Now it's sure. off. I saw you flip it. Do I need to repeat the question? No, I'll repeat it. So the okay. question was, if there is some guide coat left, and this is a prime example right now, uh, there is some guide coat left, and if you can apply body filler directly over top of it, I always sand it completely off. Reason being is Guide Coat is a great product, but it's not really designed to be left in play as it is a non-catalyzed product. So you would be, you know, have little grip, whereas the you know, strong corrosion protection, the, uh, the bite you get from the fact that this is a catalyzed body filler, you want to sand it off. So even if you have a little low spot that you know that blocking, you're just wasting your time, what I would do is I would just take a little piece of sandpaper and hit those lows just to get rid of all of that, you know, blow it off, vacuum it off. So that way you can put another coat on and you know you're bonding directly to actual body filler and not to guide coat. So definitely a good product to remove. And there's a follow-up question there. Okay. Oh geez, we're getting a bunch of questions now. Hold on, let me scroll back up. So when you add the uh, next layer of, of filler, do you need to scuff it with 36 grit or what do you start with? I mean, if it's, that's a good question, what to uh, go ahead and scuff the old body filler with. Since you've taken it to 80 grit, that is a perfectly acceptable surface for the next layer of body filler to adhere to. So you don't have to go backwards again to 36. You can go right over that 80 grit uh, sand scratch, 80, 120. I mean, a little coarser has more to bite to, especially since body filler, you're probably gonna be building a little bit more than you would a glazing putty. And while I'm on that note, I'll just quick throw that in here. Uh, body filler, question I get a lot is how thick can I make it? So generally speaking, a sanded depth should be no more than a quarter inch, which you know is a lot more than, than what you think. I mean, you might see this and go, wow, you look like you're really thick. It's really not, you know, when this is all said and done, get rid of you know, the, uh, the dents where someone may have sat on this hood at one point or something like that, uh, you are gonna, you know, a little bit of waves, you're gonna get, you might see a 16th to an eighth of an inch maximum body filler. So it's not nearly as bad as you think, but the thinner you can keep it, the better off you are. So practice your metalworking skills. It'll save you a whole lot of sanding work. And um, to spray the uh, contour polyester primer surfacer, would you be able to use a 1.8 tip or are you suggesting a 2.0 or larger? 2.0 or larger is the easiest. It will th spray through a 1.8 depending on the temperature, the humidity, where you're spraying. You may need to reduce it a little bit, which is certainly acceptable. Uh, the contour polyester primer can be reduced with acetone, but keep it in small amounts because the more you reduce it, the less it's going to build per layer. So by the time you're done doing those three coats, if you reduce it too much, it might be the same as a guy who sprayed it with a 2.2 or a 2.0 and sprayed, you know, two coats on. So you might be behind, you know, or you might be only equivalent to half of what he was. So to give yourself that build, try to keep it minimal, but certainly a 1.8 is acceptable. It will, uh, and again, it depends on the, the conditions of the day. Um, 
couple more questions. Okay. Uh, the glazing putty, it does come with a hardener. Correct. So it's yeah. more of a statement. Yep. Um, here's a question. Um, what, and I believe you've answered this, but uh, what's the minimum grit that, um, that you would sand to to still get good adhesion? And you would, it's, it's 80 grit basically is what you would recommend? For the next layer of yeah. uh, body filler, yeah. So the next layer of body filler, I would go to 80 grit. Um, you could do one, 180, or not 180, 120. Much more than that, you're relying on you know, the heavier of the body fillers to grip such a small sand scratch. So 80 grit's perfect. And then we'll also jump that question to bare metal. So it's kind of, a, it could go one of two ways. If you were going over bare metal, same thing. A lot of times when I have a repair, and I take it to bare metal, I'll just take on my DA sander 80 grit and just buzz the whole surface. So that 80 grit sand scratch in the metal is also acceptable for the body filler to adhere to. And um, the glazing putty, mm -hmm. uh, what are some, some places you would recommend using that? Uh, glazing putty, I mean, a couple of my favorite places are one, to take care of those last couple sand scratches. Maybe there's some, you know, there's still 80 grit sand scratches in here and I want to take it up to around 180 to 220 for if I'm using a urethane primer for because uh, that is a also a primer surfacer, it doesn't build quite as high. But say I have a smaller repair where I don't need that crazy build, the urethane is perfect as well. Um, the contour polyester primer or the glazing putty comes in perfect there. And then one of my other favorite uses is door dings. So if you're just dealing with this tiny little ding, there's no point in getting out, you know, a body filler that's a little bit harder to mix where you can put this directly over top of a sanded, um, you know, automotive finish that's already on there. If you're just trying to do a spot repair of a small little door ding, you know, I just put on this, the small little sanding block right here. I put on some 120 grit, generally speaking. Uh, you can tell it's a really small little block. It's perfect for just blocking around that door ding, getting it so that way there's adhesion. I put a very small amount of this on, go back at it 120 just to cut it open, 180 to 220 to finish it off. And at that point you're blended into the factory paint. You're not cutting into the corrosion protection. You're not going all the way down to the bare metal, destroying what the factory put on, especially on your newer model vehicles. That's where this really plays in as all of them have an e-coat from the factory that's a superior corrosion resistance. If you can try not to break into that, you're way better off. That's it for uh, that's it for now. All right. Well, hope you guys all enjoyed. You know the video of, of how to block sand. I didn't, I didn't go all the way along. I really wanted to critique or to show the not critique, but just to show the method. The fact that if you're cutting straight like this the whole time, you can see very quickly. I actually cut a hard edge into it, and it's not going to be pretty for you. You're going to wind up sanding more. So if you can keep, you know, kind of like more like an X pattern, back and forth you're going to cut more smoothly, you're going to cut straighter, that's the other thing. At times, you're going to need to come perfectly straight on an edge, but most of the time, as long as you keep it moving, keep it random where you're scratching, you're going to cut that nice straight panel. And also, the larger the block, uh, the larger the, the repair, the larger the block should be as well. That way, because if you're trying to cut a straight edge on this entire area with that little block, I don't know if Joe can get in there, you can see, like, I can cut the majority of this panel with the large one in one shot, whereas this one, you're gonna wind up with waves everywhere, and that's the last thing you want in your body work. So, thank you guys for tuning Hold in. Hold on, oh, I, I got another one. Got one popping yeah, in Yeah, right we had one pop up, which I think seems like a decent uh, uh, question. Um, if somebody applied a rust product, like rust encapsulator over an area, uh, what are your suggestions for then applying filler? Can you apply it directly over it, or how, or how would you recommend prepping it? You certainly can. Uh, so there's two ways to attack this. A lot of times with encapsulator, it kind of it, it we can do body filler over top of it. I personally try to keep it just to a minimum, keep it to a skim coat as it is a non-catalyzed product. So like frames, uh, stuff like that is where you use it a lot. Or what a lot of guys like to do is they'll spray the encapsulator on, they'll let it dry, they'll sand it with a DA sander, so then it just stays down the pitting where you really need it to work, not necessarily up on the bare metal, and then you apply your filler right over that. So that's another favorite technique of uh, a lot of the guys who use our encapsulator. And um, that is it now. That good is job it. today, Scott. Sounds Can't good. Can't wait to see you again, you know, maybe, maybe next week in a, in a video and a live coming up. Well, when, when's your next live? I have no idea. The we'll fans got to wait a month. Yeah, we'll have to look into that one. I mean, I know I'm doing uh, a video on how to select the proper respirator. Now, that on, sounds uh, exciting. And that's, that's actually one that could potentially be a really good uh, live video as well, because with paint season right here, we're all doing it. Definitely want to make sure you guys have the right respirator to keep yourself protected from the stuff you're working with. I mean, it is certainly some of it is, is a little more, um, you know, health 
You yeah, know? well, we use catalyzed a lot. Yeah, because a lot of people don't realize that there's a big difference between a dust mask, right? Exactly. And some of the other ones we sell, because if you're using a catalyzed product, you're going to want to protect yeah, yourself. Yeah, you want to protect And your how long you can use them. Yep, exactly. And that's something we'll cover in the next video. So we can potentially turn that into a live if you have any uh, any slots open up between now and. Uh, my next live video. So thank you guys for tuning in. As always, if you think someone could benefit from this, make sure to tag them on Facebook or share it you know, to their page or something like that so they can see it. And uh, we'll see you around next time.